the uh, San Francisco Giants lineup that's going to face Garrett Cole and the Yankees. Wade is going to play first base and lead off. Then the former Met Michael Conforto plays right field. Wilma Flores at third. Jock Peterson, the DH. Mike Yastrzemski, Carl's grandson, will play center field. He's going to bat fifth, batting sixth. Former Yankee Tyro Estrada, Brandon Crawford, the brother-in-law of Garrett Cole, plays shortstop. Blake Sable is the left fielder batting eighth. And Roberto Perez, he's going to catch and he's going to bat ninth. And they will face the Yankee ace, Garrett Cole. And those are the numbers from last season for Garrett Cole. So let's check out the Nissan Pitcher Scanner Report, David. Well, this will be his fifth opening day start overall in his career. He had one in Pittsburgh. This will be the fourth with the Yankees. And if you're thinking of Yankee history, Mel Stoudemire, Ron Guidry, and Whitey Ford each had seven of those opening day starts. Pretty remarkable company there. He had a solid spring. I mean, he looked exceptionally good in terms of his command. Only one walk in 21 and two-thirds innings in the spring. And then let's take a little, uh, little overview of his Yankee tenure. He's got 75 career games started. This will be number 76. He's 36 and 19 with a 3-2-8 as a Yankee. And in 48 of those games started, he's allowed two or fewer earned runs. Let's take a look at the defense behind Garrett Cole. Oswaldo Cabrera, he's excited. He's in left field starting. Aaron Judge in center, and Giancarlo Stanton will play right. In the infield, Josh Donaldson is at third. Anthony Volpe at short. DJ LeMayu plays second. Gleyber Torres will DH. Anthony Rizzo, the first baseman. Jose Trevino, the platinum glove winner in the American League last year, will be catching Garrett Cole. Now well, that smile's been on his face ever since the day he visited this booth a couple of days after he was drafted with the 30th pick of the first round by the Yankees. Grew up in the Upper East Side of Manhattan. Played for the Del Barton School in New Jersey, and uh, he's got to be pumped up right now. Wade is ready. Cole is ready. And let's do it here in the Bronx. First pitch is up and away, and we are underway. Giants 14, 15, and 1 in the Cactus League play during spring training. Near the bleacher creatures with the roll call, and Aaron Judge waves and kneels toward them. So the creatures are out in full force. 3 0 on Wade. And four straight out of the zone as Wade works a walk. So one on, and that'll bring up Conforto. Well, they just called out LeMayu. And here is Volpe's first call. He's quickly a fan favorite. Yeah, there you go. Recognizing the bleacher creatures, but also, David, paying attention to what's going out on the field, right? Lead-off walk. You have Conforto up at the plate. A lot to digest early in this one for the kid. Conforto missed all of last year, undergoing right shoulder surgery. It's his first game in the big league since October third of 2021 when he's with the Mets and that game was at Atlanta. So he signed a two year free agent contract with the Giants. Try to reestablish his value. Foul the way. Well you talk about opening day everybody's pumped everybody's excited Garrett Cole working underneath the fastball can't really drive it down in the zone early in this one you wonder maybe if a little more off speed will slow him down a little bit get him back in the zone. Yeah I'm getting a feel for the baseball right around 40 degrees here in yeah. the Bronx. Give or take a couple. Foul the way. I'd always think back to these games in April right pine tar was the big deal right you wanted to grip on the baseball obviously those days are over so if you're starting pitcher and Cole rubbing up the baseball now it's how do I get my hand on top how do I get a grip to finish a break the ball down it's an adjustment strike three Conforto down looking got him with the slider 
right on cue flash go to the off speed tight little cutter slider hybrid right there down the middle too no doubt. One on one out here is Wilmer Flores. And there's a strike obviously we've talked about it all spring training playing with different rules you can't have more than two infielders on each side of second base they have to have their feet on the dirt and there is a pitch timer 20 seconds with a runner on and 15 seconds without anyone on base. And the batter must be engaged feet in the box eyes looking at the pitcher with eight seconds left on the clock. And a pitcher only has two throws over to first the third one you either have to get the runner or it's a balk if you don't. Working with bigger bases as well. And because of the bigger bases there is a little bit of a shorter distance between first and second second and third. So they're expecting more stolen bases in the game which is what Major League Baseball would like they'd like to see action on the bases. Two and two on Flores. Home plate umpire is Laz Diaz. Take a look at uh, his scouting report. More high strikes called, more outside strikes on right handed batters. He's in his 28th big league season. He is considered pitcher friendly. You have Andy Fletcher at first, Eric Backus at second, and Mike Esterbrook is over third. Strike three. Flores down looking. Well, when you elevate the fastball, you're going to get some hitters off of it because of the velocity, and you'll get the slider down and away for his second strikeout of the first inning. And we talked about those four first pitch fastballs that were balls for the leadoff walk. He's rebounded nicely. Here's Jock Peterson, the DH, the cleanup batter for the Giants. And a strike. Upstairs snap throw to first diving back is Wade you know talk to people on baseball you're going to see a lot more of that John that does not count as a disengagement you could throw over as much as you want as a catcher. Yeah the catcher has free reign to let it fly as much as he wants and we've seen this a lot from Trevino last year is the the ability to throw behind runners at first base it might slow down the running game a little bit. Two and one on Peterson just underway here at the stadium. Along with Meredith Morakovich, John Flaherty, and David Cohn, I'm Michael Kay. We thank you for joining us as we start our 22nd season of the Yes Network. 2-1, two, 2 and 2. And it's the 121st season of the New York Yankee franchise, which started in 1903. Big crowd. Rising. He's in midseason form, David, 98 miles an hour. Yeah, and on the top end, and then the changeup previously was a dandy to this particular hitter. And if you look at this Giants lineup, if I'm Garrett Cole, this is the matchup that I'd be very concerned about in terms of making a mistake because this guy can lose it in a hurry, especially at Yankee Stadium. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, one on. Wade gets back. So an amped up call first four pitches to Wade out of the strike zone a walk but he has struck out Conforto and Flores both looking and now a 2 2 count on the cleanup hitter the DH Jock Peterson. Count full so Wade will go 3 2 2 outs. You know, to that point, Flash, I'm thinking right here, okay, Jock Peterson, you know he looks to cheat. Good fastball hitter. Do you go 3 2 change up right here? Well, he's thrown some good sliders in this first inning as well, so that could be an option. Maybe back door to Peterson. Wade goes. Did he go? Yes, he did. As Esterbrook punches him out. Garrett Cole 
ball, strikes out three. Giants lead one. And the Yankees coming to bat. Anthony Rizzo at first, Giancarlo Stanton in right field. Josh Donaldson bats fifth and plays third. Glaber Torres, the DH, will hit sixth. Left fielder is Oswaldo Cabrera. He had a great spring. Jose Trevino behind the plate. And the youngster, the rookie, Anthony Volpe, is the shortstop, and he is going to bat ninth. And they are all going to face Logan Webb. 32 starts last season. The numbers are very good. Let's check out the Nissan Pitcher Scatter Report. Well, yeah, he does feature a true sinker, and that led to a 56.6 percentage on the ground ball rate, which was the best in the National League. A real breakout star last year, a 4.8 war ranking, ninth in the National League, and big-time high school QB. Had 47 TDs at Rockland High School in California. And there's a strike to LeMahieu. LeMahieu so key to this Yankee season. The Yankees were rolling along, so was LeMahieu until he hurt his toe. And that was in early August. The team wasn't the same, he wasn't the same. Up to that point, he had a 393 on base percentage, having a great year. 1-1. One, one. One and two. Okay. Let's check out the defense behind Webb. You've got Sable in left, Mike Yastrzemski in center, and Michael Conforto over in right. Flores, Crawford, Estrada, and Wade. That's third to first. Roberto Perez, a great defensive catcher, will be handling the duties behind the plate, catching Logan Webb. Wade did that one, and LeMayu down on strikes. And let's listen to the hand for Aaron Judge. Batting second, the Yankees lineup, the center fielder, number 99, Aaron Judge, number 99. Well, for seven minutes on December 6th, we thought that Aaron Judge was going to be batting in the top of the first inning here on opening day. But that turned out to be an erroneous report, and Judge ends up signing with the Yankees and shortly thereafter named captain of the Yankees. And he will be here for the next nine years. That one's driven to center field and deep. Yastrzemski back, still back, on the track, at the wall. See ya! He picks up where he left off. A home run for Judge. one nothing Yanks. Are we allowed to call that number 63? No. Is, it, is it that easy? You remember last year it took him a while to get his first home run and David you were talking about the sinker all the ground balls from Logan Webb. Aaron Judge says yeah none of that matters to me. Welcome home. Thinking of a master plan paid in full. <laughs> Well, that's a wow moment for sure after the wondrous season he had last year to start it off this way with a home run over the center field wall. Two and two on Rizzo. drive it's a base hit Rizzo takes it the other way one out single well back to back at bats this is exactly how you have to attack a sinker when he tries to run it in on your hands you got to get underneath it get some backspin and carry it out to center field and then if you're Rizzo you just slap it the other way a great look from the side how Aaron Judd gets underneath the two seamer you don't roll it over you don't hit it into the ground you get it in the air and you're rewarded with home run number one. Here's Stanton. 
Stan, Stan has four opening day home runs with the Yankees. One and one. In case you were wondering, it's over 109 miles an hour off of Aaron Judge's bat to dead central, 422 feet. On a cold day in the Bronx. Did he go? Yes, he did, said Andy Fletcher, one and two on Sten. Oh, when you face Logan Webb and David already talked about the two seamer, he'll throw sliders, he'll throw change ups, and it's pretty even across the board. 30% for pretty much all of them, so it's a lot to handle when you're a hitter. Three quality pitches with a lot of movement. He throws all three about the same percentage too. a third third and a third on the fastball and the changeup have a lot of sinker on them a lot of sink to them a lot of depth to those pitches and, and that slider as well pretty good sweeper. When you're a two seamer sinker ball pitcher you're going to give up your hits but you're one pitch away from a double play and ending an inning. A lot of pitchers say they throw sinkers. But they don't. They just kind of run a little bit. There's, you know, with with Logan, it's it's a true sinker. More downward tilt than side to side movement. No Logan's run. Logan's sinker. See what he did early. Strike three. Stanton down looking. Time for the keys to the game brought to you by your local Kia dealers. Well, Garrett Cole has to set the tone. I guess he did that with three strikeouts in the first inning, and you have to get the ball in the air against Logan Webb. Aaron Judge did that with that center field home run. And let the kid settle in. Anthony Volpe, you'd love to see him make his first play in the field, have his first at bat, maybe get that first hit out of the way so he can settle into his first big league season. So here's Josh Donaldson. Played very well in the uh, the field last year. Had a disappointing season at the plate with just 15 home runs. Tweaked his swing and his approach toward the end of spring training. Saw instant results hitting the ball out of the park. Let's see if he takes that into the regular season. By the way, let's take a look at the arsenal of Logan Webb on StatCast. Well, we, we mentioned, you know, across the board, a third, third, and a third almost in terms of the top three pitches. Occasional four-seamer that he'll, he'll run up the ladder. Owen oh 2 on Donaldson. Strike three. So both pitchers ring up three strikeouts in the first inning, but Webb does serve up a home run. So Aaron Judge coming off one of the greatest offensive seasons in modern baseball history. What are you going to do for us this year? Well, he deposits one and Monument is to become the second fastest to 2,000 career strikeouts. Chris Sale is presently first. And the Cole train was in full force in the first inning as he struck out three. Mike Yastrzemski swings and fouls one off. 0-1. We said this in the open, David. This guy, although he's an ace and he's well paid, I think he's somewhat underappreciated. He is a real horse on the mound. Yeah, he's so durable, too. I mean, you never worry about him and his health overall. He's in fantastic shape. He's a true horse, a true leader. You can book 200 innings and 200 strikeouts. One and one. So the crowd's still buzzing about Aaron Judge's home run. First at bat of the season, he rings up home run number one. One and two. Well, there's that changeup, and Garrett Cole's last start in spring training, he really went to that changeup early in that game, trying to get a feel for it. The last piece of the puzzle, it looks like it's going to be part of the game plan today. Check swing. Did he go? No, he did not. Two and two. I see Garrett a little frustrated. We talked about the scouting report on Laz Diaz. He will call the high strike. Trevino tries to bring it down, does not get the call. Swing and a miss. Four strikeouts in a row for Cole. Well, let's look at the game time weather presented by Bigelow, the official hot tea of the Yankees. It's 42. It feels like 39. No chance of rain. 
The wind is out of the northwest at 14 miles per hour. It's cool. It's crisp. It has an autumnal feel that uh, it's opening day in the Bronx. Here's Tyro Estrada, and he takes a strike. Well, he is protected against the uh, the cold temps. That was a base hit in the center field. First hit for the San Francisco Giants. Estrada picks up a single. Let's check out some bounty quick stats. And here is Brandon Crawford. Six for 20 against Garrett Cole. The two of them are brother-in-laws. As Garrett is married to Brandon's sister, Brandon six for 20 against Garrett, a home run and five strikeouts. So the family probably torn here in this matchup. Well, Crawford is 12th opening day start in a row at shortstop. Only Willie Mays has had more for the Giants franchise. He had 15 straight starts. And uh, Crawford is tied with Barry Bonds with 12 straight opening day starts. Well, Crawford, a lot like Volpe in terms of the hometown kid from San Francisco, grew up a Giants fan. Great pictures of him and at Candlestick Park watching the Giants as a kid, and much like Volpe. Oh, and two. One of those players that has done it for a long time without much fanfare, right? Just gets the job done day in and day out. It'll give you a little bit of pop from the left side, but this will be an interesting day, an interesting dinner tonight for the Cole family, depending on how this goes. One and two. One on one out Yankees lead one nothing on the judge home run runner was going fouled away. Well I'm sure that they talk about the at bat in 2018 at Thanksgiving. So Cole is with the Astros at that time. And ironically enough he hits it into the Crawford boxes. But it's easily defendable if you're Gary right so it was a cheapie uh, you just lifted it out to the Crawford boxes you didn't really get me I'm sure Crawford does not feel the same way and when Garrett would say that I'm sure Crawford would say pass the gravy so there's Garrett and Amy Cole that's Brandon's sister it's a little family affair here in the Bronx Cole against Crawford Swing and a miss. Fifth strikeout. And that'll be talked about during the appetizers tomorrow. He worked him over, Flash. Several change-ups in this sequence. And then to, to finish him off, up, up, up the ladder with 97. Well, you could tell that, that Cole likes that elevated fastball today. I don't know if he's ex trying to exploit Laz Diaz and where he likes to call that fastball, or he's still running underneath it a little bit. We'll see as this game moves on. Swing and a miss. How about this for the Giants? Since Barry Bonds left and retired, they've had 17 straight different opening day left fielders. 17 straight years, 17 different left fielders. So Sable is number 17. It is stunning when you think about it. And Sable certainly earned his way on this team. He hit 349 in spring training at a 1.125 OPS. Runner goes. The throw to second. Not in time. Stolen base for Estrada. He had 21 stolen bases last year. Well, they're going to take a look at this. This is a good throw right on the money. You love the action of the tag of Volpe. Slapping it down on the back of Estrada. We'll see if he gets that hand in. Ooh, that's close. You can see the clock running down on Aaron Boone. You got 15 seconds to make that decision, and it was that down around three when he made it. Another factor in the pitch timer this year is managers got to make a quick decision on replays.
Now, the new rule is the manager has to tell the home plate umpire immediately that they're thinking about challenging, and then you have 15 seconds to, to tell him you are challenging. And if it's zero, you can't challenge. So that limits the amount of replays that they can they can look at and decide whether or not to challenge because what they're trying to eliminate is the ticky-tack challenge where a guy slides and his pinky comes off the bag. They want it to be an egregiously bad call that's easy to see. 2-2. Two -two. Swing and a miss. Six outs, six strikeouts for Garrett Cole. No runs to hit, no errors. One man left on base. We go to the bottom of the second, one nothing Yanks. Download the Yes app now. Gleyber Torres grounds one to short. One pitch, one out. We're excited about the, uh, the Yes app with the ability to have direct to consumer. Uh, the technology is great with the app. We're proud of it. We're proud of the ability to reach people that might not um, have a cable bundle and, and want to watch the Yankees. And uh, we were able to do that starting yesterday. So thank you to all the creative people behind this and the technology behind it as well. We're quite proud of it. One out here is Oswaldo Cabrera. Kind of a surprise when he got the start, but Aaron Boone said, you know what, he earned it. He earned that start today in left field. That's how good he was in spring training. He just was raking in spring training. You know, I think about last year for Cabrera where he came up and he, he got off to a good start and then struggled a little bit, right, and went through those growing pains. Well, it seemed like when he got back to spring training, he was like, you know what, that's behind me now. Now I'm going to be a legitimate big league player. And just like Volpe won that starting shortstop job, Cabrera won that starting outfield position. We know that he's going to move around, but the way he swung the bat day in and day out and showed some legitimate power in spring training, good for him. The 2-2. Two -two. Three and two on Cabrera. And Mike, Michael, the Yankees actually had a light workout yesterday, and after the workout, Cabrera was in the food room, and Carlos Mendoza was there and said, do you know that you were playing tomorrow? And he just looked at him and said, you're playing tomorrow. And he looked at him, and his eyes lit up, and he said he could not believe it. It was not lost on him as he strikes out here that he was going to be the opening day starting left fielder for the Yankees. He told me today he just hopes he's able to keep the emotions in check but was looking forward to it. His family is going to be watching at home. It's amazing because, you know, you get that kind of assignment, you get really happy. But I don't know if there's another level of happiness for this kid. He's happy every day. Well, Michael, he gave me two high fives after he told me that story. <laughs> so I think there is another level for him. 1-0 on Jose Trevino and Anthony Volpe is on deck. There's a strike. One and two. Kind of see Logan Webb settle in now. All three pitches working very well. Three pitch mix. And there's strike three. So we're seeing a lot of strikeouts. Five for Webb, six for Cole. Yeah, hey, four pitch mix for Garrett Cole. He's pitching. He's got his high fastball working too. Perez fouls it away to start. The third inning. Well, after he walked Wade on four straight fastballs, he's been first pitch strike for every batter since, so has clearly made the adjustment, getting ahead in the count. One and one. 600 or more strikeouts with three different teams. Cole did it with the Pirates, the Astros, and the Yanks, and Nolan Ryan with the Angels, the Astros, and the Rangers. And he just got his 600th strikeout as a Yankee when Blake Sable went down, so he joins that very short list, he and Nolan Ryan.
John Flaherty, if you notice, third inning, Cone has broken out the hand warmer. If I had hand warmers, they would have been broken out in the first inning. So I, I, I appreciate you, David. I guess you don't have any to share. I, I, I do. I got. I, I didn't want to start ripping it open on air here and make these <laughs> crunching noises through my mic. So. Two two, strike three. Seven out. Seven strikeouts for Cole. Boy, you establish the fastball, and then you just finish out in front with your hand and with that slider, and you're going to get a lot of looking strikes. You can see the great replay of the spin and the rotation perfectly located down and away. Back to the top of the lineup, and Wade fouls it back. So Wade saw four straight pitches out of the zone to lead off the game and walked. And then something clicked in for Cole after that. Bunt it, foul, and into the Giants dugout. So David, you'd probably disagree with me, but this time of the year, the month of April, it's 40 degrees. I mean, I clearly always thought it was an advantage for the pitcher if he could throw the ball over the plate and get ahead and count. So tough to hit when your hands are cold, the, the elements aren't great, and I'm sure it's not easy from a pitching standpoint, but from a hitting standpoint, it was brutal. Yeah, and you really as a pitcher especially with somebody like Cole and his fastball you got to test in that's the best thing you could do is try to, to get a jam city you know and, and try to stink some hands today if you yeah. can. They finally put the ball in play for an out. Two down. The first out, that was not a strikeout. Henry Volpe will lead off the bottom of the third inning for the Yankees. And here's Michael Conforto. He's familiar with the stadium, while with the Mets, played 17 games here. And signed a two year, $36 million free agent contract with the Giants. You can see Garrett Cole in a great pitching mode, Flash, mixing everything in, dropping that first pitch curveball in there for a strike, change up off of that. Really unpredictable so far. Just thinking the same thing. And remember last year at the beginning of the year, there was another curveball down and away. How it was the cutter was the big pitch right and he was using that for multiple starts then got away from it and it's a fun thing of watching Garrett go about his business is you almost never really know what the secondary pitches are going to be it's always going to be fastball some days it's a good change up some days a slider and we've seen some knuckle curves. So I'm glad you brought that up because I thought the cutter last year kind of bled into his slider and, and both of them kind of were impacted by it whereas today the shape of the slider is perfect mm -hmm. a little bit of side to side break a little bit of downward tilt two balls two strikes two outs crowd looking for another strikeout and they get it nine outs eight strikeouts and Anthony Volpe will be leading off the first at bat of the Yankee fan all Anthony has ever wanted to be was shortstop for the New York Yankees. Here he is leading off the third inning against Webb. Gets the first swing out of the way. Had a great spring. Played his way onto this team. His dad, Michael, grew up in Comac. His mom, Isabel, born in the Philippines, came to the United States, age 11, lived in Queens. Grandfather, Anthony Volpe, grew up in Little Italy. He was a firefighter in the South Bronx, a diehard Yankee fan. His favorite player was Mickey Mantle. 
family and friends, about 200 people here to see Anthony. Two and two. Two balls, two strikes. 21 years old. Three and two. Now he showed a lot of patience in spring training as well. He worked nine walks. And that impressed the Yankees. Anthony Rizzo said he knows when to swing and he knows when to take. And he walks. So he could take a deep breath, but Logan Webb cannot because Anthony Volpe, he stole 50 bases in the minors last year. Well, I like he's aggressive. He's ready to swing, but he's still selective. So that right combination of aggressive but selective gets the call there. And then the next thing you know, you know what? I see the zone. I own the zone. Tell you what, those did not miss by much on the outer half. So those are, are very impressive takes. Swing and a miss. 0 oh and 1. Well, we saw from Volpe in spring training that he did not wait around to steal bags either. It was first, second pitch, very aggressive, 5 for 5. Volpe is dancing around at first, obviously trying to distract Webb, getting a big lead. I'll tell you what, I love this combination though. Volpe at first base, 89 and 106 in the minor leagues, and DJ LeMayu up at the plate, a guy who puts the ball in play, hits it the other way. Now that hole between first and second is wide open like it used to be back in our day, David. So this will be a fun combination to watch. A throw over and Anthony was standing on the bag. Well I think of note is you as we continue to watch Anthony Volpe and his style is that he usually starts out with a, a small lead and then tries to get a bounce or a running start. Foul back. It's an interesting style for a base dealer. He doesn't try to get a big lead. He doesn't do it off of his lead. He does it off of the timing, off the pitcher, and then trying to get a quick jump, sort of a big hop, or not quite like Ricky Henderson yep. used to, but almost his own unique style. Kind of baiting the pitcher, short lead, but then he'll take off quickly on you. He'll bounce and try to time the pitcher's delivery. There he goes. Pitch is high. Throw to second. It's a stolen base. They call the high strike, so DJ LeMayu is out. A stolen base for Anthony Volpe. So one on for Aaron Judge. His case in point right there, you can see. He started out with a short lead, and before Webb delivers the ball, he's already hopping and running. To get all his momentum going before the ball's delivered to home plate, he's easily in there. And we watched him in spring training. I was commenting every game, whether he got a hit or not, he always seemed to do something, right? That was that was a positive play, a winning play. Gets himself in scoring position for Aaron Judge. Now, one of the dangers of having a batting ninth and stealing a base like that, well, you got first base open with Aaron Judge at the plate. That allows the pitcher to be a little bit more careful. And, and I've heard that argument, but I think back to last year, it took forever for opposing pitchers to pitch around Darren Judge. They kept throwing him strike after strike, so we'll see. I think they caught on around yeah. 159. Yeah. So quickly, 0 2 on Judge, who homered in his first at bat of the season. He's always been a very good opening day hitter, 10 for 24 before that home run, but his first home run on an opening day. One and two. Very quietly, Judge had a great spring training. Hit 350, scored nine runs, six doubles, two home runs. Swing and a miss. Judge down on strikes. Another strikeout for Webb. Tight slider from Webb. It's Aaron Judge waving out in front. It's either right to left or left to right movement. More of an east and west style from Logan Webb. 
Break out the yes super shot today. So here's Rizzo, single to left field in the first inning. Boy, Rizzo has to take a deep breath and not have to worry about that third infielder on the right side. He's one of the hitters that happened to be projected to get the most benefit of not seeing shifts. One on one. You know, on top of that, Michael, it's a lot of the hard contact that he had. The exit velocities over 100 miles an hour that were outs because of the shift. I think that was one of the arguments for banning the shift. Hitter does the right thing. You make you find the barrel of your bat. You hit the ball hard. You should get more rewarded for it. That's about as far over as the shorts that Brandon Crawford can be. You have to be on the shortstop side of the bag if you're the shortstop. Same thing with the second base. On the second base side of the bag, you cannot play directly behind it, but he's getting close. Two one count on Rizzo. He was a free agent at the end of the year and he signed quickly with the Yankees. Signed a two year deal with a third year option. He has fit in seamlessly here. Very close friends. With Aaron Judge. Two two. Three and two. Popped up on the left side. Wilmer Flores on the grass puts it away. And they work around the bulky walk and the stolen base. We've played three at the stadium, one nothing Yanks. Run. Coming soon to your local Tri-State Audi dealer. Nine outs, eight of them recorded via the strikeout by Garrett Cole as he leads one nothing on the strength of the first inning Aaron Judge home run. Wilmer Flores wraps one foul. Flores, 19 home runs last year for the Giants. Giants had a very interesting offseason. They made a huge offer to Aaron Judge, and uh, he decided to stay with the Yankees. Then they made a huge offer to Carlos Correa, and then the physical didn't look good, and they pulled that offer back. So they wanted to spend the money. They couldn't find the players that would accept the money or would be physically healthy enough to take the money. And they made kind of economical signings to try to bounce back from a, kind of an average year last year. But they're in a tough spot in terms of their division. You have the Dodgers or the Dragon, and then you have uh, the Padres who are on the move. And so you're the you're the you're the Giants trying to keep up in that division. And there's a walk to Flores. Second walk issued by Cole. One to Wade in the first yeah, inning and now starting off the fourth with Flores. Yeah, if you look at this Giants club, they're going to do it with the strength of their starting pitching and they're going to try to find a way to score some runs. They're hoping a full year from Jock Peterson will help them driving the ball out of the ballpark. But that, that is a big place to hit out in San Francisco. So they have their hands full in the National League West. And Jock Peterson swings and misses. You kind of look at the Giants two years ago. They won 107 games. Incredible platooning all over the place. Gabe Kapler style. Kind of taking everybody by surprise. Last year 81 and 81. Certainly falling back down to earth there. Where are they now? Probably somewhere in between there. We saw the Phillies get in the playoffs last year with the expanded format with just 86 wins. So if you hang around 500 with the expanded playoff format. And you have a little bit of a run late, you can sneak in the playoffs. Well, Gabe Kapler was the National League Manager of the Year after that 2021 year, David, with 107 wins and an interesting guy, a 57th round draft pick who went on to have a very long Major League career and kind of has done everything in this game 
player development, a little bit of broadcasting, now a manager for a couple of clubs. And you, you nailed it analytically. He loves the analytics and manages with that style. He will flip the lineup over mid game almost by design where every player knows their role. Swing and a miss. Ninth strikeout for Cole and that's significant because it ties the Yankees opening day record of nine strikeouts which has been uh, held since 1991 by Tim Leary. He had nine strikeouts against the Tigers and with the eight Cole was tied with David Cohn who had eight in the opener in 97. Clemens had eight in 99. Whitey Ford had eight in 1955. And those are the Yankee leaders brought to you by Citizens Made Ready. So one more and he he uh, separates from Tim Leary. Remember that game in 97, David? I do. It's ancient. The 90s are ancient now. One thing about Garrett Cole is the shape on his slider is perfect. You talk about pitch design nowadays. Everything is measurable by every pitch. Vertical, horizontal movement. Type of spin, spin axis, the spin rate. You can get as much information as you want on each individual pitch. But the shape of his slider today is spot on perfect. You know, it's interesting what just happened there. Cole almost was back in 2022 he was rubbing up the baseball realized the clock was ticking and he called out Trevino to reset himself so it counts as a trip to the mound but it does give him a fresh clock you can see that he was thinking it was last year two and one well David you'd be great to talk about this because I've heard a lot about pitchers fatigue with the pitch timer right they got to get ready they got to move down the hill is that going to be as big of a deal as I heard it's going to be what do you think well it, it can be and Michael's all over that you're right call time out so you, yeah. you have to really use your 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 times that you have on the mound you can disengage I guess is the word of the word of the year this year disengage or actually as Michael noted there you can actually call Trevino out and take a mound visit there. So using those sorts of things are going to be very important for pitchers. And the reason he did it at that point he was two and oh he didn't want to go three and oh because it would have been an automatic ball. So he said oh, I'll trade the mound visit and keep that ball in my holster holster. Let's see what Garrett Cole is thinking here three two count Flores at first base will it be a possibility of a strike him out throw him out can locate a slider you might get away with that possibility swing and a miss change up and that's the new Yankee opening day record 10 strikeouts for Garrett Cole well I'm thinking slider Garrett Cole's thinking change up not his best location but he gets away with it as you see the grip and the rotation coming out of his hand because he speeds up a hitter with velocity on the fastball you're going to get away with some mistakes with your off speed. Estrada taps one softly to Volpe. He fires the first, a stretch by Rizzo, and they get him for the final out. No runs, no hits, no errors. One man left on base. We go to the bottom of the fourth. Of Yankee baseball, so no one has ever done that before. Here's Stanton to lead off, and there's a strike. The only damage on the scoreboard happened in the first inning. After LeMay, who struck out, Aaron Judge picked up where he left off and hit a home run into Monument Park, his first of the year after 62 last season. Tap slowly to short, charging Crawford. One away. There's Josh Donaldson. And Logan Webb's been impressive too, other than the home run kind of matching Garrett Cole today. Maybe not strikeout for strikeout, but impressive movement on his pitches. Donaldson struck out looking in the first inning. Seven strikeouts for Webb. One walk, the one home run to Judge. He's allowed two hits to the Yankees. The Giants have just one. 
one and one. Well, Michael, you mentioned earlier Donaldson had a good spring training and some of those adjustments that he made at the plate. He saw results and that's huge for his confidence coming in. But we all know this is the one Yankee player that needs to get off to a good start. And now he's one for two as he whips one inside third for one out single here in the fourth. He needs to get off to a good start to get the fan base back on his side but he also needs to get off to a good start to regain that confidence that I'm a former MVP and I'm going to make an impact in this lineup hooks that slider into left field for his first base hit of the year. You to see that a lot this year a divey infielders because of the ban of the shift. Here's Torres. Fly ball right field and deep. Conforto back. He's on the track. He's at the wall. See ya. A two run home run for Torres. And the Yankees lead 3 0. Glaber celebrating his first home run of the year and when they talk about a right handed hitter trying to hit a sinker ball pitcher from the right side you have to stay inside the baseball and try to drive it the middle the other way a lot of smiles in that Yankee dugout Cabrera takes inside if you try to pull a sinker ball you're going to hit ground balls to short and third all day long stay inside get the ball in the air to the right side you get rewarded. One and one. A very demonstrative Torres when he got to home plate, as if waving the crowd on to cheer him on more. Felt like a little WBC celebration, right? Had that vibe. Almost 103 miles an hour off of his bat. 378 feet to right. And Cabrera down on strikes for the second time. Staying back on that sinker flat, just like you said. It's so easy to say, Coney, hit the ball the other way, stay inside. But when you have a fastball that's running in on your hands, your reaction is to try to pull it and clear it out. You have to trust yourself. You can stay inside, drive it the other way, and there's that celebration getting the Yankee crowd into it. Trevino takes a strike. You know, all the storylines this year, the offseason trade rumors with regards to Glaber Torres certainly are not forgotten, certainly not by him as well. Rip foul. So a home run for Judge, a home run for Torres, accounting for all three runs. Solo shot by Judge. Swing and a miss. So nine strikeouts for Webb, but he's allowed two home runs. The second one was off the bat of Labor Torres. He takes it the other way. And when it finally lands, it's a two run shot and a three nothing Yankee lead. Audi scoreboard. We go to the fifth inning and it's three nothing Yankees. Bottom third of the Giants order against Garrett Cole. And there's a strike. Crawford struck out in the second inning against his brother in law. One and one. Giants are opening the season in New York for the first time since 1956. Obviously, when they were the New York Giants, that was against Pittsburgh at the Polo Grounds. Right across the river from Yankee Stadium.
And after the 57 season, well, they moved to San Francisco along with the Dodgers moving to L.A. Five ball left center, Judge over, but Cabrera makes the play. One down. That's how close it was, you know, as the crow flies, 0 0.7 miles. Yankee Stadium opened up in 1923. That's the present day, so Yankee Stadium moved just a bit more to the right. And now there are apartment buildings where the polo grounds once stood. I was uh, talking to John Miller, the longtime broadcaster for the Giants Hall of Famer, and he visited the polo ground sites yesterday, and uh, he found the building where Willie Mays lived. Right next to the polo grounds, and it still stands. And the interesting part is that, you know, Willie used to have the door knocked on by neighborhood kids so he could come out and play stickball. So the Polo Grounds opened in 1911, didn't cost much, demolished in 1964. The Mets finished it up there before Shea Stadium was built, hosted 13 World Series, home to five professional New York teams, Giants, Yankees, Mets, football Giants, and the Jets. Yankees stayed there till 22 and 23, Yankee Stadium opened. And there's a strike to Perez. So that's how the Mets got their colors, right? Part of the Giants uniform, the mm -hmm. orange part, and then obviously the Dodgers, the blue part. Yep. Lined into center field, it is a base hit, fielded on one hop by Judge. Second hit against Garrett Cole. Two out single here in the fifth. So here's Wade, 0 for 1 with a walk. Walked in the first inning, first four pitches of the game by Cole. Well out of the strike zone. But boy, he settled down. Two hits, two walks, 10 strikeouts in four and two third innings. And a strike to Wade. Now, a little known fact, when they opened Shea Stadium, it was christened with Giants water from the Harlem River and Dodgers water from the Gowanus Canal. Because National League fans didn't have a team from the end of 57 to the beginning of 62 when the Mets were born. Two and two. Good pitch, good take. Seems so pronounced to me this afternoon with the slider, how he finishes it down and in, right? Hasn't left any mistakes spinning in the middle. And right on time. Broken bat and grabbed there by Rizzo. He'll step on the bag and that'll do it. No runs to hit. One man left. We're halfway through. Volpe Youngins, the first two did very well. Let's see how Anthony Volpe is going to do. His first big league plate appearance, he walked and stole second base, and now he leads off here in the bottom of the fifth with the Yankees leading by a score of 3 nothing. Let's check out the Genesis hitter scouting report. Well, we all know that he was a 2019 first rounder, but he made it to the big leagues in only three and a half years as a high school player. Very unusual, and he did that because he earned it in spring training, but it's the makeup and character that everybody has talked about, and we'll get back to this. When you call up Brett Gardner, 
and say, hey, I just want to know if it's okay if I wear number 11. To me, that goes a long way to tell you what this kid is all about. Swings at the first pitch for the second straight at bat. Fouls it off. Grounded to third. Flores. One away. Now you might have noticed today we have new graphics on the broadcast and the, the group of people that put that together and all those great things that you see at the beginning of the inning about the rookies. I mean, we got to we got to thank them. Bill Bergerfin, Rich Deut Rick Deutschman, Brandon Shapiro, Mike Carangelo, and Simon Tomeo. They did an unbelievable job during the offseason. Just a new, fresh, vibrant look, and uh, we're, we're so proud of them and, and the work that they did. How about when they unveiled it at the seminar? A round of applause from the room, right? Yeah. It was just so impressive to see. Great job, guys. Hey. Oh, and two on LeMay, who was struck out twice. Now, Michael, did I hear that Anthony Volpe has kind of a special kind of relationship with really Willie Randolph in spring training? Oh, yeah, they were inseparable as LeMay goes down for the third time. Yeah, they, uh, you know, Willie took him under his wing and uh, they were, they talked about everything. It wasn't just on field stuff. It was just how to conduct yourself, how to act. There's Willie with, uh, with Anthony in spring training. And Willie took a real liking to the kid. You know, when I heard that and when I saw some of those videos, I was thinking to myself, there is no better person to latch on to than Willie Randolph. Because I feel like, I don't know how you felt, David, but when he was third base coach when the Yankees, when I played there, he almost showed you every day how to be a Yankee, how to carry yourself. So nice job by Volpe getting as much information as he can. Yeah, it just comes down to credibility, right? When Willie speaks, it, yeah. just, it just carries a little... A little more weight to it, especially for a young player like Anthony Volpe. And Willie did the right thing as well when he got there. Travis Chapman, the Yankee first base coach, works with the infielders, and he worked. He went to Travis and, "Do you mind if I work with it?" And you know, permission was given him because Willie doesn't want to step on anybody's toes on the regular coaching staff, and you know, he's he's a resource in spring training for the Yankees. Again, going about it the right way. Two and two on Judge. Judge with a home run in the first inning and a strikeout in the third. 62 home runs last year. The new single season American League home run champion. And he strikes out. For the second time today, we've played five at the stadium here in the Bronx. It's three. DeGrom left the Mets to sign with Texas. And then two big long-term deals jump out at you, the Phillies and Trey Turner and Xander Bogerts. But pregame today, Michael, Aaron Boone talking about the one big long-term deal that he was so glad. Aaron Judge coming back to stand on the first base side and get an ovation and not on that third base side with the Giants. How weird that would have felt. That's a base hit off the bat of Conforto just over the leaping try of Volpe. Great to see Bob. It's one of the best parts of opening day that we see Bob and Jack here at the ballpark. A leadoff single for Conforto. You know, very quietly, when we're talking about Cole with, with 10 strikeouts, Logan Webb has 11. Yeah, other than a couple of fly balls that left the ballpark, it's been an evenly matched pitching duel here. But Garrett Cole, with the leadoff hit by Conforto, now approaching 90 pitches. Number 88 about to be delivered. The bullpen's getting going for the Yankees. You know, strikeouts are cool and everything, David, but it does push your pitch count up. It does, and you see uh, Wandy Peralta, the lefty, getting going. Uh oh, Garrett Cole not happy with Laz Diaz behind the plate. A little chatter back and forth on this last pitch. 
right down the middle. Mm. <laughs> mm. Oh, Trevino makes everything look good back there. Now we mentioned that Cole has 10 strikeouts and Webb has 11. So since 1901, there have only been two other games where the opposing starters had 10 or more strikeouts. In 1970, Dave McNally of the Orioles had 13 strikeouts. Sam McDowell of the then Indians had 11. And then in 2019, Max Scherzer, when he was at the Nationals, he had 12 against Jacob DeGrom, who had 10 for the Mets. And then you add Cole and Webb today. Let's see if they can turn two. Volpe to LeMayu to Rizzo. 6-4-3. Two away. I was watching Anthony Volpe take some ground balls before the game. And on the backhand, he really puts his glove and his face down to the baseball to make sure that he doesn't come up with it. Aggressive with the glove down to the ground. The feed may be off a little bit, but the athletic ability of LeMayu able to turn that easily just what Garrett Cole was looking for. It's a big play in this game. Giants trying to get back in it. Lead off walk. Lead off hit rather. And now the double play erases it. Oh and two on Jock Peterson. He struck out twice against Garrett Cole. Cole had 10 strikeouts through four innings. He remains at 10. Didn't get a strikeout in the fifth. Has yet to have a strikeout here in the sixth. But he has one now. 11 strikeouts for Cole. Six shutout innings for the Yankee ace. We go to the bottom of the sixth. Three nothing Yanks. Yes. See the Montefiore Einstein scoreboard gives the Yankees a 3 0 lead. Rizzo leads off against Webb, who has pitched beautifully. First pitch fouled away, 0 and 1. Last year tied his career high. Reached it several times, 32 home runs. First inning, a single to left, popped up to third in the third. Three four and zero for the Yankees. 0 three and zero for the Giants. First game of this three game set. With a soft ground ball to second, moving to glove side. Estrada. One away. Let's take a look at front door expert approach. And these two have been expert. Five and a third innings for Webb. Four hits, just uh, two mistakes. The home run to Judge and Torres. One walk, eleven strikeouts. Garrett Cole six. Three hits, did not allow a run. Two walks, 11 strikeouts. And seeing him go into the dugout at the end of the top of the six looks like that's going to be it for him. It's a good day's work. You get through six innings with, six innings with that many strikeouts. Wade in foul territory. Two away. Hey, it's time for Pinstripe Pride, brought to you by Toyota, the official hybrid vehicles of the Yankees. And today's picture was submitted by Eric. Me and the whole family are geared up and ready for the start of another Yankee season. Locked in. Use the hashtag Toyota Pinstripe Pride. Mention yes in pictures you post to social media to reflect your love for the Bronx Bombers. We might spotlight you in a future game. Too quickly down, and the pitch to Donaldson is out of the zone. 1 0. Donaldson's 1 for 2. Struck out looking in the first. Single to left and scored on Torres' home run in the fourth. Peralta looks like he's first up out of the bullpen. 1 and 1.
Judge got things started with a home run into Monument Park in the first inning. And then Glaber Torres goes the other way to right field with a two run home run in the fourth. A blue balloon is loose. Last Diaz. Oh, he popped it. <laughs> you hate to see that. <laughs> Emphatic about getting rid of the balloon. <laughs> That's some strength right there. Strike three. Donaldson looks at a call third strike. Yankees go down in order. We go to the seventh inning. Three, top of the seventh inning. Hyundai scoreboard three nothing. Yankees over the San Francisco Giants and they go to the bullpen. And the only lefty in the bullpen at this point in the season, Wandy Peralta, is on the mound. J.D. Davis is going to pinch hit for Mike Yastrzemski. And he takes a ball. Davis came over to the Mets last year in a deal for Darren Ruff. And Darren Ruff was just released after he struggled last year with the Mets and then struggled again in spring training. Pitch outside to Davis, 2-1. Wandy struggled a bit in spring training. Asked Aaron Boone about it. He said, not concerned in the least. Wandy's never a concern. So 3-1 on J.D. Davis, pinch hitting for Mike Yastrzemski. There's that change up, his money pitch, 3-2. The wise are getting loose, and we know every year bullpens are different. There's going to be a couple of different arms that emerge. Wandy Peralta with his change up. And he strikes out Davis. Today's injury report brought to you by Montefiore Einstein, the official hospital of the New York Yankees. It's a crowded injury list. Rodon, Severino, and Montas, 60% of the projected rotation on the IL. Harrison Bader, Tommy Canely, and Lou Trevino also on the IL. Owen one on Tyro Estrada. One and one. Estrada's one for two, single to center, and a ground it to Volpe at short. Line drive into right center field. It is a base hit, cutting over a stand. He'll get the ball in, and another single for Estrada. He's two for three. One thing you remember about Estrada when he was a Yankee, he can swing the bat, and he's got some pop the other way. So he's taking advantage of an opportunity in San Francisco to become an everyday player. He always could swing the bat. One and zero on Crawford. One one. One and two. Well, this is the beauty about Wandy Peralta when he comes in in the seventh inning or whatever lane it is, whatever inning, lefties, righties. The changeup is always a, wa a weapon, a factor. The velocity with the fastball better than you would expect. And they got him on a balk. That is something that they will be concentrating on a lot. Trevino is very upset. Angrily whipped off his mask, but Laz Diaz called the balk. On Peralta. Well, I think Laz Diaz is the one who calls this, which is a little unorthodox from home plate. Obviously called on his leg kick. You got to get on the 45 degree angle, and it looked like Wandy was on the wrong side of the line there. Generally, the first base umpire has a better view of that, but Laz Diaz very emphatically makes that call.
Well, they are putting an emphasis on calling balks because they do want to reignite the running game. The bigger bases, just two throws over. They want action on the bases. One, two. Two and two. And the pitch. Strike three. Crawford down looking. He's 0 for 3 with two strikeouts. Hey, T-Mobile customers get free MLB TV. Redeem now through April 3rd at T-Mobile.com slash MLB. Another trip to the mound. And here comes Aaron Boone. Now, Lawazica is ready. And that's who he's calling on with Sable coming up. So Peralta with two strikeouts, a single, and a balk. So a lot of columns filled with that appearance. Wandy departs. Lawazica comes in. Yankees holding on to a 3 0 lead, top of the seventh. And now they turn to Jonathan Loisega. Last season, numbers really not indicative of how dominant he was. He did have a flat spot at the beginning of the year, but then picked off, and he was the Loisega that everybody expects to see. It's really about the control, as you see the 19 walks there in 48 innings. When he pounds the zone with that heavy two-seam fastball, he's lights out. David VR pinch hitting for Sable and there's a strike. I mean you just see that pitch you see the movement and the velocity you wonder how he ever gives up a base hit. Another guy pits in the WBC. High fly ball. Center field judge is there to put it away for the final out. No runs a hit, no errors, and one man left on base at the end of six and a half innings of play. It's time for the seventh inning stretch. Yankees lead the Giants 3-0, but we'll stay right here as we honor America in the Bronx. Ladies and gentlemen, will you rise, remove your caps, and please direct your attention to the area behind home plate as the New York Yankees welcome an honored military guest and a longtime member of the Yankees family, United States Army Specialist Joseph F. Fosina, who is joined by his good friend Mariano Rivera. Specialist Fosina is from New Rochelle, New York, and he served from 1956 to 1958. The Yankees say thank you for your sacrifice and service to our nation. Now, ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention to the microphone behind home plate. Our guest is best known for his role as Alexander Hamilton in the hit musical Hamilton, having played the role for over 1,600 performances. He is currently starring in the Broadway production here in New York City. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Miguel Cervantes. He will now sing God Bless America. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountains, to the prairies, to the oceans, wide with foam. God bless America, my home, sweet home. God bless 
Yes, America, my home sweet home. All right, so Meredith Jack, me with the post game, guys. Well, thank you very much, Bob. So we go from Bob Lorenz, who really is the mayor of the uh, the pre and post game, oh. to something even bigger. The mayor of the greatest city in the world, New York City, and that is the Honorable Eric Adams. And Mr. Mayor, so good to see you. Uh, I am so excited when you think about it. Uh, you know, the first inning, the home run by, you know, Aaron Judge. I keep telling people this is my Aaron Judge year, so we're going to knock it out the park like him. <laughs> Gleyber Torres hit a home run earlier, a two-run shot. He fouls that one off. You know what? I, I'm in and out of the city throughout the week, and I see traffic again. It seems like the city is really coming back. It, it is. And, you know, we're so resilient, and people don't realize the connectivity with sports and our lives. I think about during 2001 after 9-11 and that amazing hit by Mike Piazza just really lifted our spirits. This is a resilient city, and I think the Yankees personifies that. And, you know, traffic comes back. I never thought I'd be so happy to see uh, crowded parkways again. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then you look at this ballpark, and uh, it seems like we're all all the way back after that horrific two years. Yes, it was. It, it made a major impact on our businesses, our sports team. There was a lot of discussions on when we were going to hit the field again. Uh, but as you see, this is a packed park, uh, you know, a nice day to watch Yankees baseball. I'm looking forward to a great season. This is the year for us. 2-2 count on Glaber Torres. Yankees lead 3-0. Pitch outside now. Do you have to be political and root for everybody, or do you have a team that you really like? <laughs> well, I grew I grew up with the Mets, you mm -hmm. know, and standing next to this great pitcher here, you know, Brother Cone, and how he has, you know, played on both teams. And really, my son keeps a poster of you in his room. <laughs> and But, uh, you know, it's in New York. As long as it has an NY on it, I'll be happy. <laughs> 3-2 to Glaber. That one is foul back. Still 3-2. Talking with Eric Adams, the mayor of New York City. Is a little bit of a respite when you come to an event like this that you don't have to be worried about everything? Or are you constantly looking at your phone and seeing what's going on in the city? You know, people say that being a mayor of the city is the second hardest job in America. And we were just joking about how many professional players don't want to play here because of the pressure. But the rewards are great. And it's exciting. But, you know, it's every day, all day. Mm -hmm. Trust me, you don't get a break here. And that's what is – this is the big leagues. And you, know, you understand that when you took the job. Well, Logan Webb ends up walking Glaber Torres to start off the bottom of the seventh inning. Quickly, Gabe Kapler out of the dugout. He's going to take the ball from his starter. And uh, really, Logan Webb was amazing, David. He pitched very, very well. He really did, other than the two home run balls. He matched Garrett Cole step for step and strikeout for strikeout for that matter. He's not noted as a strikeout pitcher, but he had it working today. So he he departs. We're still going to stay here and we'll talk with the mayor. You know, there's you know, this is one of the toughest jobs in the world, <laughs> being the head of this city. Yes. What's the fun part? Uh, uh, this <laughs> <laughs> and the the diversity of this city this place here our secret weapon is our diversity mm -hmm. and when you look out here at the Yankee Park you see different ethnic groups different cultures and how they come together to root for the team and so no matter the intramural season when we put on the jersey of New York City we're all on the same team we're gonna win together we're in this together that was part of our we love uh, NYC campaign we want to remind people of why we love this city so much. And I think when you come here at the ballpark and you're able to interact with, with folks and to generations, you know, dads have brought their sons to Yankee games for so long. You sit there and you talk to your child and you teach them about the challenges of, of playing the game of life. And it's the same. You take the mound. There's some days you're going to walk the batter. You're going to strike the mound. There's some days you're going to cheer and you're going to be jeered. But, you know, that's part of life. And there's a lot to learn here on this field. Now, the Yankees have a young man playing shortstop today. His dream was to play shortstop for the New York Yankees, Anthony Volpe. You were a guy who was a policeman in New York City. Was it a dream to be the mayor? Oh, without a doubt. You know, people joke with me now 30 years ago when I said January 1st, 2022, I was going to be the mayor. And every year I would remind people. And it took a long time before they realized I wasn't on medication. <laughs> <laughs> 
Is it everything you thought it would be, or is it different? Uh, and some, uh, you know, when you imagine how you could help people uh, with their problems, and you you have the power to make your your agencies really address the issues people are facing, particularly coming out of out of September 11th. Uh, we're dealing with some real issues with our young people, and that's why sports is so important. Again, you know, our children have to get put down the game boy, boy, and get in the game. Mm -hmm. You know, get, open our fields. We have a new sports and wellness czar uh, who's focusing on how do we use sports to build that energy again. I, I grew up little league football. Uh, we're not doing that much anymore. And so, as the mayor, I'm able to look at those creative ways, take what I learned to foster who I am, and help young people really be a part of it as well. You're listening to Mayor Adams of New York City joining us in the booth here on opening day at Yankee Stadium. Yankees lead 3-0, bottom of the seventh inning. Brebbia is the new pitcher, John Brebbia, uh, in relief of Logan Webb. Runner at first base for the Yankees, nobody out. And here's Oswaldo Cabrera at the plate. He's been up twice and struck out each time. Uh, Brebbia says he cannot hear the pitch calm, so he steps back, and that is up to Laz Diaz whether to give them a reprieve on the uh, the pitch timer, and he looks like he did. He did, but the clock is ticking. So, nonetheless, only so much is allowed. Foul back. Now, as the mayor, you get a chance to go wherever you want to go. So how about taking the three of us to dinner one night later <laughs> after a night game? That would be cool. Well, you know, I'm known for enjoying the nightlife. I've heard city. that. <laughs> you can get us into a club or two. David used to be able to do that when he I was, was pitching. Yeah, we're right? okay with no. David, I think. He'll get us into some spots. He's just, he still can. Yeah. How, how long are those keys to the city? <laughs> <laughs> he tried it in every door, too. <laughs> Three nothing Yankees, each team with four hits, opening day, first of 162, and the Yankees hope many more than that into October. So Brebbia sets and the pitch. One and two. Big crowd here at the stadium. On a sun splash day, chilly, but not a cloud in the sky. Fouled away. Now, how much will it mean, Mr. Mayor, that every single team in this area looks like it, it's going to make the playoffs? How, what does that mean for the, team, oh, it means uh, the a city's lot. economy? It means a lot. Uh, not only uh, does it energize uh, the city, but it also uh, helps the economy. When you make the playoffs, it brings millions of dollars into the city and with tourism and spending. Knicks are going. Rangers are going. Mets look good. Yankees look good. Now, I don't know if you care about the Giants or the Jets, but they look good. <laughs> we, we think about that year. I think it was the 69, 68, 69, where we were winning those championships. Mm -hmm. It's time to come back. Runner goes. Swing and a miss. He goes down on strikes. A stolen base for Torres. This would be the first time since 94 that every single team in the area would make the playoffs. Devils, Islanders, the whole group. So important. It's a real boost for the economy. It really... Uh, sends a message of the recovery. We've recovered so well. 99% of the jobs we lost pre-pandemic, uh, uh, they have returned. Uh, we're seeing our streets, our subways becoming safer. Uh, this is just so important as part of the recovery because the way it goes New York goes the entire country. Trevino wraps on the left field. It is a base hit. They will hold Torres at third. So first and third with one man out, and that'll bring up Volpe. Well, David and John, now uh, Volpe could make his mark on this game. Well, he's already made his mark with the fans, right? They love him already. He comes through with a one-out base hit, drive in another insurance run. This place is going to welcome him with open arms. So far today, a walk, 
A stolen base and a ground ball of third. So the Giants bring the infield in, first and third, one man out. And the pitch. And there's a strike. Upstairs. Like the battle for a kid like this is just to continue to trust the process, get good at bat, see every pitch. So funny you use that term. I, I tell the team all the time, trust the process. <laughs> trust the process. It's easy to get anxious right now. Kid, rookie, 21 years old in the batter's box. Get a little jumpy, swing at bad pitches. He has not done that. 2-1. Two, 2-2. One. Two and two. Now Wade has moved from first to left field with the pinch hitting in the top of the inning. Wisely takes over in center, and J.D. Davis is the new first baseman. You see Volpe swing through that second strike on super shot. First and third, infield in, one man out, bottom of the seven, three-nothing Yanks. Swing and a miss. And Volpe down on strikes, two away. How, how much pressure is it, the 21-year-old, you know, in the field playing on a big stage like here? It's tremendous pressure. It's the first time for him to do it. You can see there, good fastball right on by. Even when he swings and misses, though, it's a good swing. You know, that's what Aaron Boone had talked about with Volpe is that he still gets off good swings, even though he struck out there in a big spot. The pressure is tremendous for, for especially a local kid. So here's LeMayu with three strikeouts and three at bats. Now the infield backs up with two outs, first and third. Yankees lead three nothing. Brebbia on and relief of Logan Webb. Line drive, it's a base hit to left field. Torres scores. Trevino moves to second. It's an RBI single for LeMayu, and the Yankees lead four nothing. Well, very unlike D.J. LeMay, you'd have three strikeouts in a game, but he comes through with that big two-out RBI base hit and doesn't waste any time. The fastball on the inner half drills it to left field, and the Yankees add on. Now, I know everything in government sometimes takes a while to plan out. You guys are already planning for a ticker tape parade? Uh, already mapped it out. <laughs> <laughs> Already, already mapped it out. <laughs> you, you look good in a convertible driving <laughs> the Canyon of Heroes. Here's Judge. Former mayor, Michael Bloomberg, I met with him today. He talks about during his run as mayor, he had a couple of rings. He said the previous mayor had none. So I, <laughs> I cannot leave without any rings. <laughs> the 1-0. One and one, so it's four nothing Yankees. Judge had a home run in the first inning. After 62 last year, he gets right back to it in his first at bat. He's one for three with two strikeouts. Not just missed the outside corner. Two and one. So glad the uh, the mayor of our great city, Eric Adams, joining us here in the booth here in the bottom of the seventh. Two and two. So always good having the boys of summer back. It's just the beginning of the, the year and a lot of fun. We want to have a good, safe summer. I just really enjoy what the city has to offer. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, two on. Yankees up by four. Broken bat looper into shallow center. It will dunk in for a base hit. Trevino scores. LeMayu moves to third. It's an RBI broken bat single for Judge. And the Yankees lead 5 nothing. Well, they say good hitters will get jammed when they're waiting for the ball to travel well off the plate. Inside, but Aaron Judd so big and strong, he fights it off. That's going to find some grass in center field, and again, another two-out base hit to add on 
for the New York Yankees and another look at that broken bat on super shot. And the pitching coach Andrew Bailey will go out and talk with Brebbia. So the Yankees had three runs coming into this inning. Now they have two so far. Let's take a look at the exit velocity presented by Spectrum and this is the exit velo on Judge's home run. 109.3 miles per hour. That was in the first inning. It traveled 422 feet. The first of we'll see how many this year. Last year 62 home runs. The new American League record. It's amazing the technology nowadays that you're able <laughs> to look at everything, the distance, how far. It's like cross town traffic, right? <laughs> Here's Anthony Rizzo, Yankees with seven hits and five runs, first and third, two men out. We measure everything, Mr. Mayor. We we have the entrance velocity of you coming in here. <laughs> There's a strike, one and one on Rizzo. Interested with the game clock, the timing clock, all of this new entries you know, as if as the game continued to evolve. Swing and a miss. Judge with a little bit of a deke there at first. I don't know if he was really going and stopped or if that was just a bluff. He's a threat on the bases. Big man, but he runs well. Well, there's a new little trick there. The old tie your shoe and yeah. restart the clock. <laughs> One, two. Foul boy. Is it a big difference playing on the grass and compared to artificial turf? Yes. Huge difference, both in terms of the. The radiant of the heat. If it's a hot day, you really on that on on turf, you really did feel that. I think most of the artificial turfs now are regulated to indoor facilities or sort of domes that are two-way hybrid facilities. But yes, there is a big difference. The bounce of the ball. One, two, swing and a miss, and that'll do it. Mr. Mayor, yes, thrilled to have you here. You. Yeah. Really Open pleasure. invite whenever you want to come in. Right. And I'm, I'm going to make sure I take you guys out to a good. Let's race. do it. <laughs> let's do it. After a night game, let's make it happen. We go to the eighth. 140 and plus 110. So we go to the eighth inning. Pinch hitting for Perez is. Matt Beatty, Matt Beatty, I'm sorry. So Marinaccio on for the Yankees. Loisica got that final out of the seven. Now Ron Marinaccio had a very good first season with the Yankees. Somewhat disappointed the way it ended with the injury. But the numbers just jump out at you. Beatty grounds one foul. Yeah, it's good to see him back on a big league mound. It was so disappointing the way his season ended last year. He was really a big piece coming out of that bullpen. You can see him rehab get healthy this winter and you would expect him to be again another big piece. Yeah there's a lot of confidence in him. From really the entire organization but especially Aaron Boone and, and Matt Blake. Still 0 and 2. You know we talk about measurements nowadays being able to measure every pitch and. When you look at the characteristics of Marinaccio's changeup, it is very much in the elite category in terms of movement, deception. 
popped up. Donaldson gives it a look. I always enjoy watching young pitchers come up to the big leagues and pitch out of the bullpen and there always seems to be a little do I belong here is my stuff good enough to pitch at this level and clearly there was a light that went on with Marinaccio last year and I think it's that change up you talked about David that's a weapon swing and a miss baby down on strikes. Well, the Yes app is more. More ways to watch and experience live Yankees, Nets, and Liberty games. More ways to interact with family and friends with Yes Watch Party. And more ways to win big cash prizes with Yes Pick and Play games. For the best seat in the house, download the Yes app now. Here's Wade. 1 0. Wade walked on four pitches to start the game and then Garrett Cole just found it and was dominant. Six shutout innings. Popped up behind the plate. Trevino giving it a look. And he makes the play. What a play by Trevino up against the screen. Two away. They're going to see if they want to challenge that. Well, it's such a good play getting to the wall right by the screen. You can see he keeps his helmet on shielding from the sun. The ball will always come back to the playing field on the pop up because it has backspin and Trevino uses about as much room as you can use right up against that fence. Nice play. Here's Conforto fouled away 0 and 1. See Gabe Kapler the manager of the Giants almost holding up wait, waiting to see if there's a little ricochet. Off of that screen, if he wanted to replay, it did not. Sometimes you see catchers flash go up there and push the net back with their hand and make the play if they, <laughs> they get uh, enough time to do so. Really a nice job not giving up on that pop up because off the bat I thought that was going to be 10 rows deep. And again, I talk about that backspin, it'll always make its way back towards the playing field. Trevino hanging in there making the play. Oh and two on Conforto one for three struck out twice single to left just over the leaping try of Volpe that was in the sixth inning just missed one and two see that late darting action on that changeup. it's not just a straight change it has action on it sort of darting diving movement. You know one way to measure pitches nowadays is one thing they call vertical approach angle and Marinaccio's numbers are at or near the top in that particular category on that particular pitch. Meaning late movement darting action. Two and two on Conforto two outs here in the eighth. That's Tyler Rogers warming up. His twin brother Taylor Rogers, a left hander, is also on the team. Fouled away. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Grounded to first. Rizzo will flip to Marinaccio and that'll do it as the right hander works a one two three eighth inning we go to the bottom of the Tyler Rogers takes over and he will face Giancarlo Stanton comes sidearm and deals a strike 68 games last year he's not going to overpower you but he'll get you out. Grounded up the middle. It's a base hit for Stanton. Well, 
we told you his uh, twin brother is also on the team. And that's only happened four times in the big leagues. Jose and Ozzy Cansego with the A's, Eddie and Johnny O'Brien with the Pirates, and Joe and Red Shannon with the 1915 Braves. You wanted to run with Joe and Red Shannon, you know that? Yeah, I was just thinking about that. I bet they were fun. <laughs> I don't think that's fun for a righty batter, is it, John, that kind of delivery? It's not, but uh, watching Giancarlo Stanton's approach as Esteban Floreal will pinch run for Stanton, go in for defense. It, it has to be right back up the middle because Rodgers, he does it with a lack of exit velocity off the bat, only 84.2 miles an hour last year, the exit velo against him. Right back to Rodgers, and he will get Donaldson, and moving to second is Floreal. We'll take a look at that John Carlos Stanton hit and the way you have to approach a side armor a guy who comes from down under cannot try to pull this baseball you got to stay right back up the middle to get it past the pitcher nowadays without the shift you're going to be rewarded with a base hit. Yeah a true some submarine style. Below sidearm. Got to think back to Kent to or Dan Quisenberry. I was thinking Quisenberry. Yeah. I mean, that's very difficult to master with a true underhand delivery like that. That could be very effective, obviously, because you just don't see that style very often. He can almost get his slider to rise, too, from underneath in that angle, or at least the illusion of rising. Tim Rogers uh, having trouble with the pitch calm. Now, umpires are going to catch on to this if, in fact, this is a stall tactic to get around. Uh, the pitch timer issue. Oh, look, this doesn't work. I mean, the umpire isn't going to go out there and listen to see whether or not you could hear the voice giving you the pitch. So I think they'll see what teams do it the most and whether or not to curb it or not. They don't have to give permission. But in this case, Laz Diaz did. He, he charged him a mound visit, actually, as one came off the board. Runner at second, one man out. And the pitch to Torres outside. Torres with a Big first day. He's one for two, had a two run home run in the fourth, and then walked, stole a base, and scored a run in the seventh. One and one. When you watch Rodgers, you think of Adam Simber. Yeah, for the Toronto Blue Jays out of their bullpen as a weapon in the American League East. So the Yankees have some history seeing some submarine relievers. Fly ball, center field. Wisely's there. He'll put it away. Tagging is Estrada. He's going to third. The throw is not in time. So runner at third with two outs for the Yankees. This car played a telecast presented by authority of the New York Yankees. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the New York Yankees. So here's Oswaldo Cabrera looking to avoid a golden sombrero. He is 0 for 3 with three strikeouts. Runner at third. Line foul. Cabrera was uh, selected as the left fielder today. They could have gone obviously with Floreal or Aaron Hicks and newly signed Franchi Cordero, but they decided to go with Cabrera, who had such a great spring training. And he's quickly down on the count 0 2. Crowd of 46,172 here at the stadium, a sellout in the first game of the year. Strike three. Oswaldo Cabrera 0 for 4 with four strikeouts. Yankee strand a runner at third. We go to the ninth. Yankees up 5 0. Streaming on the S app now. Saturday's game nationally televised on Fox. But yes, is going to have post game coverage for that one. So they're going to ask Marinaccio to go for two outs or two innings, should I say? 
as Florial takes over in center and Judge moves to right to replace Stanton. So Marinaccio worked a one, two, three, eighth inning. Yankees have doubled the uh, the Giants in hits, eight to four. They lead five nothing. A 2 0 count on Wilmer Flores, 0 for 2 with a walk. There's a strike. Yankees looking for an opening day shutout. Uh, they have not had one of those since 1988 against Minnesota when they won 8 0. Hit sharply, foul. And that one was a complete game shutout. Names that you guys will recognize. Rick Roden, a three-hit complete game shutout, beating Frank Viola, who went on to win the Cy Young Award that year. And that game for the Yankees, Mike Pagliarulo and Ricky Henderson both hit home runs. Nice. What year was that? That was 1988. You know, Rick Roden was a, a, a really good hitter, and we bring that up because Logan Webb is the last non Otani pitcher ever to hit a home run in the big leagues. And he started the game for the Giants, so that might be a, a distinction that lasts a long time. Yes. Hit sharply to Volpe. Across the diamond. One away. Well, fans, after the final out, keep it here on Yes for the WB Mason Yankees postgame. You get highlights, analysis, and complete player reaction from opening day. Plus, you get to hear from Aaron Boone on the manager's report. He'll talk about Aaron Judge's home run, Anthony Volpe's debut, and Garrett Cole's brilliant six innings of work. And Glaber Torres is two run home run. A lot of stuff to uh, unpack. Here's Jock Peterson. 0 and 1. So I think everybody here wanted to see Anthony Volpe with his first big league hit. You see how he gets ready with that little hop, the backhand, and the strong throw. He's looked very comfortable in the field defensively. That little pre pre shot routine there, the, the, the crow hop, it's something he's been compared to Dustin Pedroia. A lot. The, the former Red Sox second baseman did that as well. I haven't seen somebody hop like that in a long time. Everybody's got their own sort of routine yeah. they have, but that that is that's something there. So Volpe, who is not super tall, has been compared by some scouts to Dustin Pedroia, and that was uh, brought to his attention. And he said, "Well, I respected Dustin Pedroia, but he was a Red Sox. I wasn't a fan." Swing and a miss, two and two. JD Davis is on deck. Fouled away. Two balls, two strikes, one out here in the ninth. The Yankees trying to close it out. Missed outside, three and two. Fouled straight back here. Right under our booth. And Marinaccio deals. Peterson battling. Peterson trying to avoid that fourth strikeout. He's 0 for 3.
Nobody wants to look up in center field and see that. And he works a walk. Now, how long will they go with Marinaccio? He's thrown 31 pitches already. Got a pitch timer violation. 0 and 1. That was on the hitter, J.D. Davis. Runner goes. Foul ball. It's the fastest 0 2 count that's, you'll ever have right now, man. One pitch and you're behind 0 and 2. Let's go get him. You know, one of the funny things about, you know, the pushback on the, the pitch timer. You know, they shouldn't have it to end a game with a, a strikeout or a walk. And, and my my question would be, well, the Super Bowl ended pretty much on a pass interference. Do you just not call the rules because it's the last out of the game? Yeah, you know, it's yeah, I know that that's going to be the question. And invariably, it, it, it's going to happen at some point. Happened in spring training. But you can understand it in spring training, right? They're trying to get the message across. We're going to take this seriously. But, boy, I hate to see a game at Fenway Park coming down the stretch, a big at bat, and I'd like to see the umpires have a little bit of leeway. I understand what you're saying, Michael, but, you know, mm -hmm. I hate to see a big game end that way. One, two. Strike three. Davis down looking. Yankees and out of way. Well, after all the change up in fastball, it's kind of a sweeping slider at the top of the strike zone. Coming right at you. Here comes the spin. Trevino presents it, gets the call. So here is Estrada. Inside, 1-0. Estrada. He has half of the uh, the Giants hits. He's two for three. Giants have four hits. Runner on first. Two men out. Yankees lead five nothing. Foul back and out of play. One and one. a strike sweeper one strike away sellout crowd of over 46,000 looking for victory number one one strike away runner goes strike three there it is a perfect opening day as the Yankees win five nothing Aaron Judge with a home run DJ LeMayu with an RBI single. The Major League debut of Anthony Volpe. Glaber Torres a two-run home run and brilliant pitching by Garrett Cole. Six shutout innings. All in all, a really good opening day here in the Bronx. Yeah, Garrett Cole set the tone on the mound. Consecutive strikeouts, really a dominant performance early in the game. And of course, as Michael said, Aaron Judge is first at bat. After his historic season last year, Flash, he goes dead central. Yeah, I don't know if you can really have a better home opener than today. The kid with all the excitement playing shortstop fielded his position flawlessly, but it's going to come back to the captain, Aaron Judge, setting the tone. And Garrett Cole, your number one starter with a dominant outing for six innings. Yeah, not much to complain about today. Although it was cold, the Yankees gave the fans some reasons to be warm, home runs, great pitching, and a major league debut. Add it all up, pretty good day here in the Bronx.